Hey everyone, uh, we're going to try to go back to the roots of this channel and uh, and doing what I do best. And I'm going to get you through a little tutorial here. This hopefully won't take as long as I am afraid it will. But um, I'm going to show you how I go from an idea to a sketch. Uh, and this is not going to take you from a sketch to a draft and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But we're going to baby step this one in a series of videos. So. Um, if you'll bear with me, I want to go through some concept and ideation techniques that you might find useful and hopefully will get you going a little bit further. Um, now I don't always incorporate these idea ideation and conceptual like brainstorming techniques too often, but I just so happen to need this. So I thought I'd record it and show you guys, uh, one thing that I sometimes do. And this isn't the only thing I do. Sometimes I do other stuff too. Sometimes I just jump into something and just like what you'll see me on uh, the live stream. A lot of times I just jump into something and scratch it out. But this time I want to do something a little bit different um, because of where this artwork is going. So anyway, so I've created these boxes here and I'm not really concerned with their actual ratio because these are going to be like super basic thumbnails, super, super basic thumbnails. Uh, and I can make more boxes if I need to or enlarge them or whatever, but I'll start with just a couple to begin with. And as long as they're the, as long as they are the general ratio of the final product or somewhere in that ballpark, um, <clears throat> then I'm happy with that. And I just realized that these are not the, the correct, uh, direction. We want to go, just realize we want to go more vertical than horizontal. Uh, so yeah, the concept that I'm doing here is a goblin. So I want to capture like the energy and the, uh, nature of a goblin. And I don't really know how dark or how wacky or zany I want this goblin to be, but I do know that I want a goblin in here. So I think it might be kind of fun to play around with just some silhouettes and shapes. Thinking. On one of them. To have like a goblin. That's maybe like, I don't know, thinking like from underneath and I don't know why he, we would be seeing him from underneath. <laughs> I don't know. They're just like the silhouette and the shape just kind of came to me, but I don't know why we would be seeing. Let's come back to that one. So this one here, maybe we have, might be kind of fun to do like a, um, a single point perspective. One that's kind of jammed into the corner a little bit. And have it kind of like racing towards us. So he's kind of like right here and then we'll have it kind of like running maybe with like an arm uh, no. He's got that. He's running with that leg up. Let's see here. Let's think about this. Yeah, maybe we have him like crashing through. We'll give him like a buckler or something like that here. Like a little goblin buckler. Um, that's just an idea. Like have like a and again we're not even really worried at all at all about the quality we're just trying to get out the ideas the good and the bad up front these are just simply ideas so we're gonna do something like that where he's like kind of like jumping at the screen a little bit uh maybe we'll do maybe something a little bit more like solemn and. Perhaps like a little bit more like brooding and moody. 
where there's just like a single go goblin there. He's got like a mace and you know, like the chain is hanging low. Got a little shield. And he'll have like a shadow. Heavy shadow. Hmm. Maybe something like that. I still want to know what this goblin over here would be riding. Might be kind of cool to like put him on like a cannonball. Have it just like firing. Let's go back to that real quick. And just like really, really like overdo the action on this one. And then we'll have like the cannon back here. You can like really overdo like the <laughs> effect of him. So that's an idea. Then let's look at maybe a maybe we can do like a goblin that seems a little bit more like fit for battle. So we could have goblin here and he's got his got like more of like a like a baseball swing Conan the barbarian kind of pose. Maybe we'll give him like a kilt or something. Uh, like a claymore. It'd be kind of cool to make him look like a like somewhat like a Scottish warrior. Maybe even make him kind of like buff and bare chested. I kind of like that idea a lot actually. Give him kind of like a Highlander, like a Scottish Highlander warrior. Look, I mean, it'd be just kind of cool because it's just a little unexpected. I mean, you could even like do like the like the highlands in the background. I actually kind of like that idea. Um, I like the cannonball one. And I think it's a lot of fun, but I I don't know if that's like one that for the project that is the most appropriate. And so that's one of the things like you can may have a you may have a really great idea for a sketch or an idea for a painting. But if you know that it's not going to be conceptually the best application of your talent to the project, you know, save it. <laughs> save that idea, put it for, for another project. So now that we have this, I'm gonna create my new artboard and I'm doing a 10 by 14. So 10 inches cross, 14 inches down, uh, as you will for whatever your units of measurement will be for your project. Uh, I do 300 DPI, although I could do as high as 600. I just don't see any purpose behind that since most printers won't take advantage of that at this size. And this is going to be printed actually quite a bit smaller than this. So it will still get that extra pixel density no matter what. So I'm going to look at this idea of this uh, Highlander. Oops, knocking everything over, guys, as I do. So one of the things I'm going to search for is like a Scottish Highlander. And the other one that I'm doing a search for is the movie Braveheart. Now, why on earth would I do that? <laughs> um, the, the costume design is not what I would consider like very accurate 100 percent. like there are some things that you got right and there's a lot of things that got wrong in braveheart um but the the design and the costuming is really really good and it really is the kind of the vibe we want to pick on man there's a lot of cows somewhere between this guy and this guy is where we want to like focus our design like i said i really like this 
this i i mean i don't care how historically inaccurate this this is i think this makes for a very good design uh at least this design base so that's what we're gonna roll with And so for our goblin, I'm going to, the first things first is I'm going to get a super crazy rough sketch. Like we're getting just gist of placement of basic shape. None of this stuff really matters that much how close to accurate you get. So don't get hung up on those details. Um, and I'm just using a chalk brush so I can get really like loose and gritty and dirty, uh, textures on my brush strokes. I'm also going to set this to a multiply layer mode. That way, uh, with my more neutral medium gray, medium charcoal kind of color that I'm going to sketch with, when I go over my lines, they'll get darker. Kind of similar to what I would do with a like a 2B or something like that pencil. Because if I was if I was doing this in a sketchbook, that's pretty much what I would be doing is going over my lines and getting darker and darker as I went over them. It's definitely very noteworthy to say that they do have a, a bit of an, of a, you know, like a pointed skull shape. I think that much we can pretty much say is as a defining factor. Now, whether you go with like a big nose or, uh, or not, is fairly irrelevant, but we're just going to place down the face and they have a very large jaw, which kind of, again, very iconic of the goblin design. And let's go back and look at some of our reference. So, I liked the idea of this goblin, and this is like way huge, so we're just going to shrink it down for right now. It's probably going to be bigger than that, but again, we're just trying to get this stuff laid down. I like the idea of this goblin having um, this like po. You know what? Let's let's turn it. Oops. I guess it would help if I had this clicked. Uh, let's turn it the other direction. Flip it horizontal and let's give him kind of like this. Maybe we'll make him facing forward a little bit more. So let's go back to normal and white out this face shape a little bit more. Because I really liked that that pose and general like posture of the the Highlander gentleman that we sort of like picked out, and I wouldn't mind capturing that general like air about this goblin. to uh to the final they have even for males and females alike it looks like goblins have pretty stocky little humongous bodies and so if we give him it might be kind of cool to like give him Instead of like a, uh, like a big, maybe we do still want to clay more. I think it might be kind of cool to give him like a dagger instead. I just feel like that's like way more of like that. That like tough guy, badass. Islander look. All right, and so he's going to have... I have one leg up right here. 
we'll have the knee. So what I'm doing right now is I'm basically just turning all of the different limbs and joints into different points of geometry. And as I go back over them and as I draw them out, like they'll get darker and darker and darker. This basically means I'm not afraid to go in with a bad stroke right off the bat. And there's nothing here that says this is exactly how it's going to end up being. So, you know, you kind of, you got to kind of go in. I'm going to go ahead and create that horizon. Actually, it'd be taller than him. So maybe that. Uh, you got to go in kind of with that with that gusto of just being like, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this like one way or the other. It's not, there's nothing stopping me. And if I make a bad design decision or brush stroke or whatever, like that's, that's hardly the problem here. Like right here, we're going to do this like lake behind the gobbo. Kind of like we saw in that that image with the, the Scottish Highlander. And then he'll be standing up here on this ridge line. Maybe like some trees. Again, I'm not really too all that concerned with accuracy and all that hot mess. I'm just trying to I'm trying to sketch I me mean, a goblin. We're gonna move this whole thing up. I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit. I have to keep in mind that there's going to be an object at the top of this. This is going to go on a card. So there'll be an object at the top and there'll be a little bit of data at the bottom. So I need to keep in mind how that plays out. He's got himself a little kilt. I think a kilted goblin is awesome. And I'll have this little foot and little boot down here in the grass. But yeah. So um, always keep in mind, you know, if you if you're working with something, especially that is on somewhat of a concept or is going to be used in some sort of way, try to remember where it's going. All right. Some goblins got himself some big ears. And maybe we'll give him like a we'll give him like that big scally hat. Maybe we won't even like try to hide the fact that he's kind of like a Scottish Highlander. Like not even kind of. Maybe kind of dope. Give him a vest. And again, none of these things are necessarily going to be in the final thing. I just want to see what it's going to look like when I create. I need a I need a a representation of what it's like when you create a a goblin that's a Scottish Highlander. And when you do that. What does the silhouette look like? How does it sit in the world? What kind of changes do I need to make up front and off the bat so that way it reads right? Because we're going to have this lake, these mountains back here, these like hill ranges. It's going to be out here in this little field boy, which this needs to be darker, like, like a little more, more saturated. Then this area back here, there'll be some trees that covers the hill. And switch to a normal brush and we'll start to start to kind of like, maybe we'll build in some values right now just to see what this would look like for us. You know, maybe we will keep this. I don't know. I 
kind of just diving on in on an idea. And remember, this isn't even the idea we started with. This is just some idea. I'll have his little, I forget what the name of the little front pouch thing is. Maybe we'll make him somewhat of like a Sort of like a charming boy. Give him some dignity. A little bit of charm in class for a goblin. Keep him tough, you know. Maybe we'll even give him like the goblin equivalent of sideburn, like like mutton chops or something. And then the guy that we saw in the highland, he was wearing like a shirt, right? It didn't, they got rolled up sleeves and that's what I like to do when I have a shirt with long sleeves. You almost can always count that I'll roll up the sleeves. It's almost like without fail. I don't like so short sleeve shirts, but I'll wear a long sleeve or I don't like, I don't like short sleeve button downs. I'm wearing a t-shirt, I don't like long sleeve t-shirts, but if I'm wearing a button down, I want to be able to roll up my sleeves. Why do I have that so crazy? Like, it, that's just the way I, I don't know. There's some sort of mental process broken there. <laughs> We're just like, hmm, for some reason, I prefer to do things just straight up backwards. Maybe we'll give him like the socks. Let's give him like the socks. He's got like the whole sock thing going on. And he's got his little bracers. And again, I'm 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 torn between giving him a sword. I just want I want to give him a knife. I want to give him like a good dagger. I just think that that feels more it just feels right. Now we're almost to a point where you could just easily like hand this off to an art director to get their like, hey, keep going with it, thumbs up, or you know, oh no, change this, change that. But if it were me, if I'm handing this off to a, to an art director, one thing I do want to make abundantly clear to them is what I intend to do lighting wise. Now, that doesn't mean that you're stuck to this, but it, I don't know, it, to me, it just, it's good to give them a, a no surprise scenario where, where it just doesn't, it doesn't have to come up that you did things like that drastically different or like you, you didn't walk in without any kind of a plan. So I would say take a little bit of time in this meantime to create your lighting plan or just like, like I said, what you, what you perceive would be a starting lighting plan. So if you want to add in a few like highlights and shadows here and there to make sure that you're showing them that you're thinking about that, I really think that that can save some really uncomfortable conversations. I've had a few conversations in the past, which is why I do this where they've asked, well, okay, well, how's lighting going to go? And you know, they, they really start grilling you and you can see like their confidence is not necessarily broken, but it's not a hundred percent there either. So you can save yourself a good, 
good bit of trouble just setting up a basic lighting plan. We'll create some grass here. Nothing real complicated, just to show off what we're doing. Some trees, so just do a quick. Quick tree foliage here. And again, we're trying to just base it off of what our lighting plan is. I kind of want the lighting kind of coming in through the hills a little bit. I wouldn't even mind doing a like a silly dramatic lighting scenario where he's kind of like individually lit up. And then I'm going to go ahead and, again, because I don't want to have those conversations about what my plan is for depth and, and all that kind of stuff, I'm going to go ahead and set up these so that they're no longer sitting on a, they don't have to be detailed at all, but I want them to be at least blocked in a little bit. And you can see that now that we've gotten rid of the horizon line for the most part, what a big difference that makes for um, like the overall feeling and tone of the background. And it just sets us up so that way we don't have to have those conversations, which is what I want to avoid. I want to get to the yes, go ahead. Don't get me wrong. I don't mind having those conversations. If someone's like, hey, well, can you explain this? Like, that's great. Like, let me do that. Poke holes in what I'm doing, please. That way I don't have to do it later. Um, and I don't want to have those conversations where I'm justifying a mistake or an oversight later on down the line either. I'm going to create some like little like dapples, dapples of foliage and stuff going up the hills. Um, so it is okay if like they call out your stuff if you really did over, over see something. All I'm saying is that like if you can avoid having the silly ones where it's like, these are things you should have planned out in advance to show them, to give them the confidence that they know that you know what you're doing. Let's do it. Do it up front. Especially in the sketching phase. Cause you never know when they, like I said, they, they might say, Oh, I see what you were getting at. It just doesn't work. Or we had another idea altogether. So we're just going to dapple those in. And then we're going to make a couple of these trees over here a little bit bigger. So that way it gives us a sense of scale. And that right there is a sketch that you can probably turn into an art director to get the green light. And what I might even do is go ahead and add a little bit of extra extra glow coming in there just to show them that I have an idea of the lighting scenario. But you could take that to an art director and be like, Hey, what do you think of this idea? And they might tell you works great. Send it or, you know, get it going. Or they might tell you, well, I like what you're getting at. Let's try this. Or they may tell you flat out. It doesn't work. But that's going to be our goblin idea from thumbnail. We had we just went through those four to our sketch. It only took about a half hour to to get to this point. Uh, and from here, you can kind of go wherever it is that you you need to go. And again, these are super rough sketches. We're not talking about anything that you're ready to start building out from you're not ready to print from here <laughs> there's no color but hopefully you'll find that this helps you with getting your art started sometimes people i hear all the time say i have a hard time getting started okay well here's how you get started we wanted to do a goblin we just came up with those four ideas just from doodling silhouettes and there you go we ran with an idea that sounded kind of like fun I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you would please 
hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on my other social media and live streaming services. And let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. I know that every single YouTuber out there says that, but I could really use the help. Uh, so, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. And paint through the pain. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.